Welcome to the video lecture series of electronic devices. This is lecture number 26 and today's topic is luminescence. Let us begin. First, you have to understand what is luminescence. What do you mean by it? So, the general property of light emission is known as luminescence. At the same time, you know that many of the semiconductors absorb energy in some forms. That may be photon absorption, electron bombardment, introduction of the currents, etc. So, a fraction of absorbed energy may be re-emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation in the visible or near visible region in of the spectrum means you must note this particular point that fraction of this energy is re-emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation in visible or near visible region of the spectrum. So, the luminescence is a two-step process. Luminescence is a two-step process. And what are these two steps? Excitation of the system. excitation of the systems and second is the subsequent emission of photons. Subsequent emission of the photons. And several semiconductors exhibit the property of luminescence, especially the direct band gap compound semiconductors. You must remember the type of materials are direct band gap compound semiconductors and you must remember some of the examples of direct band gap compound semiconductors like gallium arsenide two or three examples you must remember so that you can write in the question as well These are certain examples of direct band gap semiconductors. And depending upon the excitation mechanism, luminescence can be divided into a number of categories, but there are three important categories. So, let us understand that. Three important categories are, first is photoluminescence, second cathodoluminescence and third is electroluminescence. All these three are the important categories of the luminescence. But what do you mean by each and every one? So, photoluminescence carried when the carriers are excited by photon absorption. If the excited carriers are created by high energy electron bombardment of the material, then the type of luminescence is known as cathodoluminescence. And if the excitation occurs by the introduction of current into the sample, then the type of luminescence is known as electroluminescence. 
Now let us understand each and every type of luminescence in detail. First is photoluminescence. What do you understand by photoluminescence? As I have told you, when light falls on a semiconductor material, the charge carriers means electron hole pairs are generated and these electron holes pair can be generated by two ways. Means either band to band transition or transmission involving forbidden energy level. Let us understand this. If this is the EC energy level for the conduction band and this is the energy level for the valence band. If there is a generation of electron hole pair from conduction, if electron moves from conduction band to the valence band directly when a photon energy is being represented by H nu and electron hole pair is generated. So this is the case one where it directly there is a transition from band to band and this is known as intrinsic. First one. And second type of transition is when there is a involvement of forbidden energy level means electron is not moving directly from the conduction band to the valence band. It means what happens over here? It first reaches so to certain level over here from this point. Let me draw this. Photon energy is represented by H nu and after a certain time it moves from and or there is a transition from this level forbidden level means you can say here from this point to the valence band. So this is the second case you can visualize and this is a type of extrinsic. So you must remember it whenever there is a direct transition in between band to band that is intrinsic type and second second which involves the forbidden energy. Now let us consider the light emission from a semiconductor. How this light emission happens and how many types of emission exist over there. So the emission is of two types basically. Those types are direct or fast process. This is the first one which is known as fluorescence and the second is slow process which is also known as phosphorescence. So in direct or fast emission, the emission of photons stops within approximately 10 raised to the power minus 8 second after the excitation is turned off and such a fast luminescence process is known as fluorescence. And for this particular interval 10 raised to the power minus 8 second only which is being chosen this is the lifetime of the atom in the excited state because after this particular time the excited atoms returns to the ground state while in the second case which is the slow process known as the phosphorescence so here if the emission occurs then what will happen in this case, even after the excitation has ceased, the particular atom remains in its original place and this particular process is known as phosphorescence. So you must remember both of these points. Let us understand the excitation and the combination mechanism. Here, the material contains some of the defect levels in the gap being mentioned as ET over here. You can see it. The trap is an impurity atom or imperfection in the material capable of capturing an electron or hole means individually not the both. Then the captured carrier may be re-emitted at any time and consequently becomes free to move 
until the captured by the recombination center so let us understand this in detail and in this particular diagram if we show that an incoming photon is being represented like this and if its energy is h nu 1 which is greater than the energy of the particular band gap then what will happen an incoming photon will be absorbed and creates an electron hole pair and now this particular electron will reach to the conduction band over here let us draw by this and you can understand this particular transition by a as shown over here now what will happen now this excited electron gives up a part of this energy to the lattice by the scattering and now this electron reaches near the bottom of the conduction band let us say at this particular point and this transition is being shown by this B step. So now electron is available in the bottom of the conduction band as I have told you. Next what will happen now with the electron which is available at this particular point let us say this was point number 1 this was point number 2 now this is point number 3 it means now electron is available at point number 3 and then the electron is trapped by a impurity level ET you can see ET is the impurity level it is trapped means now it reaches at this particular point point number 4 and it remains trapped until it is thermally re-excited to the conduction band again means you can see this particular transition means from trapped level to the again conduction band then what will happen finally direct recombination occurs as the electron falls to an empty state in the valence band see point number six when electron jumps from conduction band to the empty state in the valence band and now it is giving off how much of the photon energy it is giving off a photon energy which is h nu 2 and the value of this h nu 2 will definitely less than h nu 1 so from this particular discussion you can conclude that there is a delay between the excitation and recombination and it is important to mention here that even for a larger time when electron is trapped like here in this case one trapped level is being shown number of trapped level may be there so number of times electron may be trapped before the recombination and in such type of cases phosphorescent light persists for a relatively longer time even after the excitation is off excitation is off means you must write even after excitation is off even then phosphorescent light persist and this phenomena is known as photoluminescence now let us understand what is cathodoluminescence the excitation of luminescence material by electron bombardment is known as cathodoluminescence the principle is used in the CRT tube oscilloscope or other visual systems and you have studied the basic principle of CRT which is a selective excitation of the phosphorescent screen selective excitation of phosphorescent screen phosphorescent screen by beam of 
एनर्जेटिक इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विद इन अवैक्यूम ट्यूब दिस इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड यू नो दी व्यू ऑफ द कैथोड्रो रे ट्यूब मीन्स वॉट आर द एलिमेंट्स एग्जिस्ट ओवर हेयर so cathode ray tube it consists of electron gun accelerating anode deflecting system fluorescent screen so electrons are emitted by the electron gun and then this particular electron beam is being deflected deflected by the pair of deflecting plates there are x y deflecting plates and finally this electron beam hits on the screen then what will happen the beam produces a spot on the screen let us say this particular spot and the electron present in the material are excited to higher energy states means here electrons are excited to higher energy states and during the recombination it emits the light like if the electron beam beam hits at this particular point then it emits the light at a particular spot on the screen so this is the process of the cathode luminescence you know it clearly and you can explain it moving ahead the last is electroluminescence what is electroluminescence luminescence may be distinguished by the source of input energy means source of input energy is very important so when the luminescence occurs due to the introduction of electric field or current it is known as electroluminescence and the first electroluminescence effect was observed when a phosphor powder like is placed in a plastic or gas capsule it was subjected to an electric field and the light which was given by phosphor of course its efficiency was very low so its efficiency is very low here a term comes what is injection electroluminescence this is also a very important term you can note it down over here so injection electroluminescence is most important method of excitation this is very important method of excitation if you consider a case of light emitting diode so leds are what leds are actually the pn junction leds are what leds are actually pn junction and under forward bias condition it can emits external spontaneous radiation so in led electric current causes the injection of minority carriers into region of crystal where they combine with majority carriers this is the fundamental over here so because of this emission of recombination occurs and this effect is known as injection electroluminescence electroluminescence can also result from tunneling into forward bias or reverse bias junctions as well as the avalanche excitation so you must remember both of these points these are very important it means how can you explain the electroluminescence so when luminescence occurs because of the introduction of electric field or current that type of luminescence is electroluminescence topic for the next class is direct recombination of electrons and holes thank you so much for watching today's lecture